The video you're about to watch involves video game gameplay. As such, there may be flashing lights. Oh, sir, we'd like this Super Pong by Atari. I'm sold out. That's a demonstrator, but I've got lots of these. Well, we want Super Pong by Atari. Yes, but Super this... Pong's four color games are more fun. Well, how about this one? Well, no, you see, we'll have more fun with Super Pong's four color games. There's Catch, Solitaire, Super Pong, and Pong. So we'll take this one. Okay, sure you won't change your mind. No, nope. why? Because I wanted it. Super Pong, it's not just another video game. It's a real Atari. We've all heard this story. Atari wasn't the first to make the home console, but they certainly popularized it with the home video game console, the home Pong machine. The Pong machine was great. It took their already massively popular Pong arcade machines and made it available in a unit that could fit in the home. While very popular, there was major issues with machines like this that came out at the time. They could only play one game. You're watching the most exciting game you will ever see on your TV set. Telstar by Coleco. Telstar Handball, Tennis, Hockey. All three at an exciting low price. For great family fun, hitch your TV to a Telstar by Coleco. Imagine buying a plug-and-play toy, and it only had one game on it. Now imagine instead of it costing $30, it cost $100. Pretty steep, right? Well, this was 1975 money, so it was closer to almost $500 in now money. Kinda hard to justify that kind of purchase for even the biggest Pong heads. $500 in quarters is a lot of Pong. And if you were in an arcade and feeling spicy, those quarters could be used to play other games too. That's where Atari comes in to fix this problem with the Atari 2600. What made the 2600 special is it fixed the one game only problem. It was a revolutionary idea at the time, the video game cartridge. Welcome to Club Atari. What's your pleasure? Break up? Ah, here's something new, Circus Atari. Cartridges, video chess, football. Cartridge, sir? Fez is here. We meet again, Fez. Yes, a little game of Space Invaders, perhaps? What shall we play for? For fun, of course. <laughs> no other company offers you as many different video game cartridges as Atari. Considering it came out just two years after the Pong machine, you can imagine early adopters were kicking themselves because the 2600 didn't just play Pong. It launched with Air Sea Battle. Basic math. Sounds crazy fun, right? Blackjack, Combat, Indy 500, Starship, Street Racer, Surround, and Video Olympics. A lot of these I actually have. But a total of over 450 games were released for the 2600, the quality of which varied. Which is true, even on modern hardware. Shovelware will exist as long as there's a quick buck to be made. This was actually the start of Atari's problems though, and what we know of as the video game crash. The crash was a huge recession in the game industry that lasted from 1983 to 1985, and there were quite a few reasons why this recession started. One was an oversaturation of games in the video game market, and there was little to no quality control. I'd like an Atari 2600 system, please, and everything that goes with it. Everything? You sure you want everything? I want everything. Now you get a new low price, up to $30 a rebate office, and a free pack. Is that everything? It's not everything. You can get nearly 300 different copies. 300? That's nothing. It's something. But it's not everything. Soon there'll be a voice module, trackball, remote control joysticks, and a computer keyboard. It's amazing. It's amazing, but it's not everything. It's not everything. Soon there'll be educational games, too. Is that everything? That's everything. For now. For now. Imagine spending 60 bucks on a game, and it doesn't even function. I'm so glad that doesn't happen anymore. The overproduction is actually a big reason that the majority of these games cost nothing. Even E.T. only costs 10 USD now, and yet people are so super surprised that I have it. This was also the time of the personal computer. Many families were steering away from games in favor of a machine that at this time was essentially a big ugly calculator. Here's something that's going to make a lot of changes. A program called Atari Writer. It turns any Atari computer system into a word processor. All men are created equal. Don't you think there's something a little out of date about that? Just a little, yeah. Why don't you fix that? See, you can make corrections, move whole groups of words around, and print it out on your own stationery. Atari may make the typewriter obsolete. What's the typewriter? But these factors caused a massive crash. The video game industry went from being a multi-billion dollar industry to struggling to keep the lights on. Atari, who was the main reason people even had a video game console, was also one of the main reasons these consoles were dying. This is where E.T. comes in, the final nail in the coffin, the final bad game people could withstand.
made especially for systems from Atari. The video game that lets you help E.T. get home. Just in time for Christmas. Happy Holidays from Atari. It was the summer of 1982 and the movie E.T. The Extraterrestrial, a Steven Spielberg film, came out. A movie everyone knew would be a massive hit long before it hit theaters because Steven Spielberg had a history of making good films. It was about an alien who was stuck on Earth and met a little boy and through the power of friendship they helped E.T. the alien return home. It was a massive hit, costing $10 million to make and making back $800 million in box office. Atari saw how huge this film was and decided to make a video game adaptation. They had cash symbols in their eyes and their tongue was lolling out of their mouth and they were panting heavily and very ready to go. They assumed that just based on being tied to the movie, it would do really well. But of course, it wasn't that easy. Negotiations ended in July of that year and the game designer, Howard Scott Warshaw, was given five weeks to make the game. Christmas was coming and it needed to be on shelves stat. Soon, Christmas came, and the game is a hit, selling 2.6 million copies. Then, the negative reviews come in. Chicago Tribune says, New E.T. video game stumps an earthling. TV Gamer says, E.T. the Extraterrestrial is a game based on that lovable little character from the smash hit film E.T. Despite the fact that it was designed with the help of director Steven Spielberg, it isn't up to much. Adventure buffs will probably cringe at this game, as will older E.T. fans, but younger gamers seem to enjoy it. Electronic Games says, E.T. It's truly difficult to understand a game such as E.T. After splurging a reported $10 million to get the property and Steven Spielberg's cooperation, this game looks like it was turned out in about five weeks. Wow, they really hit the nail on the head with that one. It, it did take five weeks. Joystick Thumb says, E.T. To paraphrase a line from the movie, E.T. is nothing to phone home about. As you can probably tell, E.T. is a cute game, a very cute game. Its cartoon quest-like scenario is like a scaled-down version of the Atari Superman cartridge. Unfortunately, Atari's graphics haven't seemed to improve much with age. They're still blocky and bland. Imagine playing Atari and complaining about the graphics. <laughs> it looks the same as any other Atari game. Vidiot says, There aren't a tremendous amount of shortcomings in this game, though a few bothersome wrinkles could probably have been smoothed out had Atari had more time. Or if Christmas was in May, if you catch my drift. As they themselves point out in the instructions, sometimes E.T. will fall back into a well after he has levitated up to the planet's surface. <laughs> well, no kidding, guys. This will uh, be a recurring problem later on in the video. Almost 700,000 copies were returned to stores. A disaster. Then, the Atari landfill. They made too many cartridges and there were so many returned that they had to bury the rest in a hole in the ground in New Mexico and covered them with concrete. The following year, the video game crash happened. Speaking of that landfill, it was thought to be an urban legend until in 2014, people got permission to dig in the area and it turned out to be the truth. E.T. was a game so bad it killed the video game industry. But as I said, the Atari had a lot of bad games on it. Was E.T. really that bad? Or is it just the results of unchecked hype followed with a disappointing product? Was it really that bad? Or were expectations too high? Well, I have my copy, so let's find out. Before we start, this gameplay is emulated. It's too annoying to try and get an Atari to run on HDMI so I can record it, and the cords are old, making it very fuzzy. If you want to see me play more Atari games, consider liking, subscribing, and stuff like that. Maybe I can justify buying the new 7800 Plus, which has new games coming out for it as well as plays my old games. So here's where I would normally jump right into gameplay, but this is an old game, so old that this is when games came with these things called Manu Owls, and they were printed on Popper. Popper was made of trees. Gaming companies stopped including these because they said they wanted to go green. In actuality, these Manu Owls cost money to make, and it saved them money by not making them. Manu Owls needed writers, artists, screenshots, and sometimes required people to actually play the game. So that was just a lot of wasted money. They didn't care about trees, it was just cheaper to not make them. Well, in the time of Atari, they couldn't put tutorials in their games. There just wasn't enough space. Most of them didn't even have text outside of score tracking. So in order to teach people how to play these, they included these manuals with the game and they were integral. You were expected to read these from cover to cover just to understand how to play them, and in an adventure game, and what an adventure it'll be, in an adventure game like E.T., you really needed to know what you were doing before you played. 
Here's an example of someone playing E.T. who has never played E.T. before. Alright, hello. Alright, hello everybody. This is Connie. Uh, well, I'm Sarah. But I'm Con Connie. Connie's playing it. Connie has never played E.T. before and has no idea how to play, has not looked at the manual, so has no clue how to play, and this is what it looks like when someone plays E.T. and has no idea how it works. Have you even seen gameplay of someone else playing it? Nah. Okay. So all you need is the arrow keys and the space bar. Why you got a dick? That says... See uh -oh. that one pixel right there? Oh a dick. Oh my god. E.T. has a penis. Okay, the number goes down when I move. Yep. I'm gonna sit. Am I picking up rocks? Oh, angry man. He's going for me. <laughs> okay, so you, you figured out that, those, that you want to avoid those guys already. I, I mean, I've seen the movie. A long ass time ago. Oh, uh, I, I think you'll find out that this is not very much like the movie experience. Oh, oh that was a hole. Yeah. I, I like, I like the, the jam of the feet here. Is there like a space bar jump? Well, I told you that, uh, that they use arrow keys and space bar. Those are the only buttons you use. Whoa. There you go. Uh, what the f- Yep, that's how you get out of holes. Oh, wait, why is that one different? I don't know. Fuck. Oh, uh, you're, you're being taken to jail. No! I will survive in this system! <laughs> Just kidding, you ain't Okay. What? 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 I... Got you, man. You can walk over hills! <laughs> yeah, he can walk over the holes. <laughs> also, this map is incoherent. Like, incoherent. No, I won't survive in this system! Like, every direction I go is like a whole different map. It doesn't matter what part of the map I'm touching. Watch this. That won't. No, it was the same map. That one was the same. Oh, oh you're fighting back. Maybe you're fighting back? I don't know. <laughs> I actually don't no, know. No, I'm, I'm actually stuck. Okay. Oh, okay. Because I haven't looked at the manual yet either. <laughs> so I can't even tell you how to beat it. I just, I played it a couple of times without the manual. I, I didn't even touch it. So why does making your neck longer make you float? Whoa, you just teleported maps, what the hell? That's what I'm saying, like, I'm just randomly teleporting sometimes. But I don't... <laughs> and then those dudes just come out of the f blue. Also, I keep losing my stones. Is this like Slender's 8 pages or something? <laughs> it kind of is, actually. <laughs> it kind of is Slender the 8 pages. I did not even... <sighs> Bruh. Okay, do you want a hit? Did, did you just say that? <laughs> yeah, you teleported. Do you want a hit? No. Er, kinda. Uh, remember in uh, E.T., he's trying to phone home, so you need to collect the pieces of his phone in order to phone home. Oh, I thought I was picking up just bus change so I can get to a payphone. The pebbles aren't the phone pieces. You haven't even really experienced true annoyance yet. Oh, there it is. <laughs> This is where the game gets fun. <laughs> oh my lord. This game was made in five weeks. Yeah, it really shows. <laughs> Try holding a direction when you leave. I, I was! Try holding right when you get out. There you go, you're out. Freedom. That's a what kind of world. Oh, he just ignored you that time. It's those ones, the ones on the white that follow me. That's, I think that might be one of the phone pieces. It's like the third one I've collected. Yeah, but did you notice you lost them all? Oh, so every time you get captured, you just lose all of them. So you have to fall in the holes. You're kidding me. Or maybe you had to fall in the holes. I don't know for sure, but I've only seen those orange things in the uh, holes. I guess we'll find out when we check the manual. Oh <laughs> You're gonna die alone in a pit. <laughs> this is how it should have ended. <laughs> maybe this is why they buried him afterwards. Yep, there you are, dead. And there's Elliot. Stupid kid. And you're alive again. Keep going. 
I just get a revive? Uh, that's it? I don't know. I've never played it this long. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> it won't even let me out of the hole. <laughs> I'm holding direction. Like, it is RNG as to whether I get out. <laughs> I'm gonna die in this hole. Hello, my baby. Hello, my... This is how the movie should have ended. What, you getting revived infinitely? Trapped in this purgatory? This is game of the year right here. <laughs> in 2024. Alright, I feel like if you... Oh, wait. Are the rocks you pick up your revives? I don't know. Well, you're out of rocks now, so... I've been out of rocks. Let him die. Okay, yeah, you're just gonna keep eating the souls of children until you were, until you finish this. I hunger. All right, we're done. No, let me live. I will get out of this hell <laughs> one way or another. <laughs> you can't escape this hole. I will escape. I'm getting closer. Just let me out of the hole. <laughs> Wait, like, I'm, I'm, I'm making, I'm making... You're, you're, you're inching your way over there for sure. I, I can move on dead. Oh, Wait. no, you're dead dead now. Game over. I, I won. <laughs> I won because you don't have to play anymore. I won, everyone. That, that was my speed run of E.T. right there. As you can see, not exactly the deepest game, but it's definitely not intuitive. If we played this game based on what Connie figured out, we would never actually beat it because Connie thought the dots were important and she avoided the holes. So I present to you our Tome of Knowledge, the E.T. Manu Al. The cover page has just the prettiest art. Atari had a really bad habit, or good habit depending on your opinion, of doing this. The games never had art of the actual gameplay on there, well, rarely did. Instead, they had beautiful cover art that gave you the spirit of the game because they had to try and sell you on it, but it tells you nothing about the game. On the first real page, we have our table of contents, a little E.T. looking at a flower and a cryptic message from the ancient time of 1996. It's like a time capsule. Dear Scott, where there is a flower, there is an Easter egg. Then it's signed in an ancient form of writing that is no longer used known as Cursed Sieve. What a message. A hint. A clue, a cryptic message, almost poetic. Ancient humans were something else. All right, page one, help E.T. get home. Okay, got it, seems simple enough. That's more than the game told us already. More creepy art too. Page two, we have a ton of text. They were not concerned about getting the bare minimum across. The, this whole manual could have been summed up on a sticky note, but we're already here. May as well read it. What kind of crazy planet is this anyway? Relatable content, as an alien visitor to Earth, this planet is indeed bonkers. We came here to conduct a simple study of primitive planets, and look what happened. Was this ever confirmed in the movie lore? These things came and scared away my friends. Before I knew it, all my friends boarded our light ship and flew home. Whoa, the extended E.T. lore is kinda nuts. What do I do now? The only one I can trust is that nice little alien, Elliot. Glad they had to do that one in character. He gives me those tasty energy pills. What did he call them? Reese's PCs? As an alien, I find this line particularly offensive. But these other aliens, every time I get ready to assemble my transgalactic communicator, they come and take me away. That's so stupid. We don't have transgalactic communicators. We have Blebos. Kidding, I use a smartphone like the rest of you dweebs. E.T. continues, The one with the white coat sticks that temperature measuring device in my mouth. Well, there's other places that they can stick it. I wonder why he was so upset when I melted it. And the other one in the trench coat keeps muttering those strange sounds. National security. I just want to go home. I hope Elliot and I can assemble all the pieces of my communicator before energy runs out. Alright, solid bit of lore there. Aged a bit poorly, perhaps, but it's fine, they had no idea that aliens were real. But even just that summary gives us more hints on what we're supposed to do. Next would be gameplay, but some of this stuff expects us to understand the controls, so we're going to just skip ahead a couple of pages. Controls are pretty simple, though. You just use your joystick controller, and it has only one button. You use it to move in eight directions, then press and hold the red button while pushing the joystick forward to levitate yourself out of the pit. This one you can figure out by accident. It might take you a minute. You can also use this button to sprint at the cost of energy. We'll go over that soon, but it can help to get away from scientists and agents. 
Lastly, we can use this button to execute a power move while in special power zones. Alright, back to gameplay. In ET, our job is to find the three pieces of his interplanetary telephone, then call his ship and guide him to the landing pad and get rescued. We have to do this before his energy count hits zero, then we score points based on a few factors. So earlier when Connie said, oh my god, is this Slender the Eight Pages? Yes, kind of. But we only need three phone pieces. The manual continues saying that there are six screens total, four have holes, one has Elliot's house, the science building, and the FBI building, and that's the screen where E.T. gets captured. And the final screen is the forest where we start and where our ship will be. The game ends when we get all the phone pieces for the ship, and then for some reason if you want to play again, you can press the button to start a new round. You can keep playing again and again, and your points will continue to climb, which is a weird touch. Now let's discuss the screen elements. Most screens will look like this one in figure 1. We have E.T. in the center, that's you because that sure as hell ain't me. The darker green color is the holes. The single pixels are the candy pieces. The four digit number is our energy. This serves as our hit points, game time, and more. Every action in this game depletes the timer. The number to the left is how many pieces of candy you have. Next is the phone piece indicator. I've never seen this in the game. Not that I consider myself to be the E.T. pro gamer but this didn't show up on my gameplay or Connie's. The next screen example shows us what it looks like when we are what they call wells. I call them hells because this is the main source of aggravation in this game. If it wasn't for these damn wells, I don't think people would have had much to complain about. They're just straight up broken. When you enter the well, ET falls in and takes damage. Then if you're lucky, there will be a foam part inside. Now to get back out, you gotta hold down the button. Which button? There's only one. <laughs> it's an Atari joystick, you silly. Now hold it down and push forward. This will make E.T. rise out of the well while rapidly consuming his energy. When you get out, you might safely get out and walk away, but if you entered it at a bad angle, you might fall right back down that hole, taking another 300 damage. If you fall in the same hole more than once, you're probably stuck there for at least 5 to 10 more escapes. That equals up to a total of 3,300 total points, a whole third of your total health. If they fix this, the game would be just okay. But how could it be fixed? Well, I don't know anything about Atari development, but I'm guessing the hitbox is just too big, or E.T. keeps getting put back out on the same exact pixel when escaping. Now something we haven't talked about on the HUD is the mysterious glyphs that appear at the top center of the screen. There are arrows among other buttons, so it must be a hint to where the phone pieces are, you might think. But no, the arrows actually, according to the manual, are to move to a new site zone. Executing power in any of these four zones will cause E.T. to immediately move to a new site in the direction indicated by the arrow. So it's a form of fast travel to prevent you from needing to walk to every place. Explains why Connie kept randomly teleporting when pressing the space button. Let's find out what the rest of these icons do. Maybe we can get a hint that'll make the game easier. Well, the icons in general are called power zones. They're locations where we can activate our abilities and the abilities vary based on the icon. For question marks, we have our actual hint. When you press the button, it will reveal whether or not a phone piece is hidden on our present screen. Ah, nice. In the manual it says that the dot from before is from this power-up. So it wasn't that it was a broken feature, we just didn't have the power-up. But it also says, E.T. must go to the telephone piece and touch it. Then via telekinesis, it will move to the telephone construction site at the top of the screen. That is a really weird way to say he picks up the dang thing. The prison icon is called the Send Humans Back Zone. Great power-up names, genius. Currently, it sends all humans back to their original screens, the building screen. This egg-looking icon is called the Eat Candy Zone. You eat one of these pieces that you have, and it heals your energy. The chatty head icon is called Elliot Zone. Elliot comes to E.T.'s rescue. Elliot basically acts like an attack dog and chases off any humans on screen in exchange for nine candy pieces. Elliot consuming candy like this works the same as giving them to him so that it's a way to bank some points. The totally not Space Invaders icon is called the Call Ship Zone, and E.T. will use this to call his ship once the phone is assembled. Once this happens, a timer appears and you have to book it to the ship. Calling his ship also doesn't work if a human is present. The last power is called Landing Zone. You activate it and you escape. But if a human is present, the ship leaves and you'll have to do it all again. Um, that's pretty much it. I hope you were keeping notes. Who am I kidding? You're not going to play this. I don't even want to play this. Why do you think I'm doing this terrible segue into other stuff like characters? Like the agent who steals and hides phone pieces if he finds E.T. or steals his candy. Or the scientist who doesn't want the phone pieces but takes you to the science building that looks like jail. And then the last one, Elliot. We give him candy pieces for points or when we run out of points he'll revive us with 1,500 energy. He'll only do this three times, equaling another 4,500 more energy. 
The reason they did this is probably as a band-aid for the game's difficulty, or because they wanted you to have more health, but for some reason couldn't find a way to fit more than four digits for E.T.'s health count. Anyway, enjoy this. The death scene. It's the closest you'll get to a cutscene. Damn, that's all the characters, huh? Uh, what else can I do to stall? Oh, here's something neat. The Atari 2600 came in 6-switcher, 4-switcher, and the Junior. All of them had switches for a variety of uses. We had power for turning on the console. Don't, don't worry, I'm going somewhere with this. The next one was a color or black and white switch. Not everyone had a color TV yet, so this switched the color palettes between black and white and color. Some games could just do this on their own. Some of them you had to, like, manually use a switch to do it. My eyes did not come with this switch. Then left and right difficulty switches. This is for multiplayer games. You can set the difficulties for the left player and the right player. A game reset switch, then a game mode switch. The game mode switch lets you shift between different game modes on a single cartridge. Some games had multiple modes or versions, and ET is no different. When you use the game mode switch, you'll get three different versions of ET. Don't worry, none of them are the good one. On the ET cartridge, they work more like difficulty modes. Game 1 is the default and is the game unchanged. Game 2 takes out the scientists and leaves everything else normal. This one kinda sucks because you can get caught by the scientists on purpose to avoid losing a telephone piece to an agent, so in a sense this makes the game harder because you don't have any scientists to, you know, run to instead. Then the last game mode is game mode 3, which takes out all humans except for Elliot. The difficulty switches also work for this game. The right switch makes humans run faster or slower, and the left switch makes Elliot stay away from the ship when it arrives. Now comes the time for me to rip the band-aid off and play. I've read the entire manual and wasted precious brain space on this thing that I will never do again. I even read the bonus helpful tips at the end. Remember, this is what they expect me to do as the bare minimum before playing. So I have the complete ET, the extraterrestrial for the Atari 2600 database downloaded. If I can't beat this, then there really was never any hope for anyone to. Hello everyone, I just finished reading the manual and I'm back with doing this. And this is the third time that I've had to re-record this because for some reason, uh, this very flawless game does not agree with being recorded well. So, uh, I tried it with my model, I'm trying it without my model, I'm trying, I tried it with the PNG tuber. And it seems like no matter what I do, there's always some sort of audio screw up. You know what, take me to jail, I don't care, you smell. So, we're just gonna, we're just gonna do it anyway, if there's any audio issues... I'm sorry. I tried. The main thing we're doing here is we're trying to... we're... I didn't touch that, I thought. Okay, so it already starts. Okay, so we can hold space for a little longer and float a little bit extra. Please go away. We need to check all the holes, sort of, because... Uh... And he was writing for me on the other side right there, of course. Well, it's a good thing that I didn't have anything to start with. Oops, I did it again. Okay. Oh, okay, so when you get out of the hole, it keeps going for a little bit. So we can... No? Okay. I... It seems like there's a trick to it, but if there is a trick to it, I cannot figure it out. Yep, this is how it starts. These ones particularly, like... Entering them from the top tends to be a problem. Okay, if I stand, if I, I stood still and it let me through. Okay, he took my candy. That's fine. You can have the candy. Okay, there we go. He just. Okay, and I walked off a screen and I am in a hole now. And then I teleported. That that was my, that teleport was my fault. Though I was holding space. So let's just, you know, keep going. Okay. Oh, okay, so every time I walk off the right side of the screen, I am gonna find myself in a hole. Okay. I was seeing comments like, E.T.'s not hard, you just have to play the manual. And it's, you're right, it's not hard, it's just broken. The game is just broken, there's so many issues with it. Like, it feels like a rage game, because... But not like a good rage game, where if you fail, it's your fault. This is like a bad rage game, where it's like the game is constantly having issues. Well, that's an eat a candy piece to get health, which which worked. Oh, okay, this is a hint one now. I have no idea if it worked. Well, it didn't change, so I don't know. So let's go check the other screens and see... 
How did you follow me from a different screen? And now they're stuck. How did they follow me from a different screen? Like... I don't know. This is, uh, this is already very aggravating, and I haven't found a single phone piece. I will hold space, and I will hold up. Okay. Every time I do it, it feels like there's a... Okay, there's a, there's a trick to it. Just don't walk immediately. The trick is don't walk immediately. So let's, let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so just don't walk out of it immediately. Which is kind of hard when you've got people chasing you constantly. It's kind of hard to not move immediately afterwards. They're just, they're just stuck. We're just stuck here. And that's a good waste of time, too. So, I don't know. I've checked the left hole. i checked the right hole. Yeah, I'm just taking my candy. That's fine. I think I've checked this hole a billion times already. Okay. Yeah, it just... Okay, here we go. We got a part. I don't think we're going to hold on to it for very long, though. Look at that. He followed me from a different screen. How does that work? Because sometimes he'll just... Now he's ready for me waiting outside the hole. Okay. And that's my fault. I gotta let go of space. And I gotta stop holding up when I when I leave. I gotta wait until I'm on solid ground first. Oh, that was my fault. I sprinted. I shouldn't have sprinted. But, you know, I, I get the revive, so we're good. We still have that phone piece. We only got two more phone pieces to get. Okay, very carefully inch myself out of the hole. Nothing in this one. Okay, so that means that if there is a part, it's in that last one on the left. Doesn't matter. I take him prisoner. Okay, well, I have my phone piece. No, no, no. Leave me alone. Okay, so there is no more in this screen. Okay, there's a little freedom with it. There's a slight trick to it. No, no, screw you. And walking off the left side, put, left side puts me in a hole, too. Okay, and dead. So, the the best way to deal with the holes, it looks like, is to just slowly inch yourself out of it. And he took my phone piece. Okay. Well, there's we're not really any reason to continue, because there's zero chance that I'm going to find all of these. It teleported me again. That's because I walked off the, off the top of that screen, which puts me on the right side of that one, and I got grabbed again. It's not hard in the sense that the concept is easy to grasp. But it is very easy to understand how it works, what you're supposed to do, where you're supposed to go, how to win it. And the pro the idea of it is very easy. Just take my last candy piece, dude. Just get out of here. Okay. Leave me with nothing. Nope, I'm going to kill myself before you can take me back with you. Nope. I, li I live life by my own means. There we go. Oh, wait, I still got one more revive after this, I think. Yeah, this is my last life. Not that it matters. I'm not going to find that. I'm not going to find three phone pieces. There is a slight trick to it there. They should have said in the guide, hey, you can you can move around a little bit before you leave. I have nothing for you to take. I didn't even have a candy piece. So, the holes are buggy, but there's... There's tricks for working around them, and I'm not doing them, apparently. Don't, don't keep holding up. Make sure you carefully take the time to land. The problem is, is that this game is not something that works well with precision, and it does not work well with your, with you being under the constant pressure of enemies chasing you. Um, yeah, I've seen people speedrun this in just a minute, and it's like, very cool. I'm very happy for you, but this is not in a state that's considered playable for the majority of people. If you play this, and you play it seriously, and you want to actually try it and try to actually finish it, I recommend playing it on game mode 3, where you have no enemies. Because, uh, 
The biggest enemy for you in the game is not the researchers or the agents. The biggest enemy for you in this game is the damn holes. The damn holes and their bugginess. Alright, after reading the booklet and playing again, I think this game is not very good. It might even be bad and buggy. There are multiple situations of things happening that just shouldn't even be possible. Things like powers not activating when I press the button and bad guys not disappearing after I go into a pit. Hitboxes on pits being way too large. Walking onto another screen and it ends up being a pit. Escaping that same pit and exiting on a side that should have never been possible to enter. Like exiting left on the first screen and then leaving the pit on the north side. The map is pretty hard to navigate without some serious memorization skills. Like going up from some locations will put you on the upper part of the next connecting screen instead of putting you on the bottom of the next screen That would where it would make sense. The maps are just nonsensical. I wouldn't say that this alone would be enough to cause the video game crash on its own, but it's still a pretty bad game. It's definitely bad and broken, and probably one of the worst games I've played, but the expectations and hype were high here, and they definitely let a lot of customers down. It could have been a perfectly fine adventure game had it not been so buggy. E.T., though, was definitely the final straw. There were so many bad games that were allowed on the system because Atari didn't put more restrictions on third-party developers. But this is worse than that. E.T. was a first-party title. This was a massive betrayal of the consumer's trust. Had this been another game from a third-party developer, it probably would have been fine. But this was made by the guy who made great games like Yar's Revenge, one of the best games on this system. You're a fly named Yar on a quest in space. You attack the shield of the Kotile space, but watch out, Yar. He knows where you are. Yar's revenge is oh, new from Atari. Have you played Atari today? With ion zones and evil drones, there's nothing else like Yar's Revenge, the way out space game that's new from Atari. Who else? Have you played Atari today? So Howard Scott Warshaw can make great games and has proven that he is capable of doing that. But five weeks is just not enough time. Even if Atari was a more simple system, and it is, it was limited by its day and age. Nowadays, when you develop a game for Atari, you can export it as a ROM and load it up into Stella and test it immediately. Maybe it takes you like a minute or two to be able to export it and then run it. Back in the day, you had to send the data to a machine to get it flashed onto a cartridge. It, sure, it was possible to make a game in six weeks and, and in under six weeks, but these had to have been simpler games. E.T., had it worked, would have been pretty ambitious, I think. Which is the biggest compliment E.T. has ever gotten. Oh my god, am I an E.T. glazer? But if you compare E.T.'s five weeks to get a bad game to something like Saboteur, another great game by Howard Scott Warshaw, it took over six months. It just goes to show you that even that far back, we knew that forcing devs to work on a crunch resulted in a terrible product. The video game crash wasn't caused by E.T. It was caused by taking advantage of consumers and by abusing developers, a lesson we apparently still haven't learned from. Could E.T. have been a great game? I don't think so. With what they have here, at the most it would have always been just an okay game. The whole experience can be understood in a single playthrough and even if it was perfect, it wasn't an arcade-like experience. So there also wasn't any depth. There wasn't anything to gain from perfecting your skill with it. In fact, like a lot of it just didn't run on skill. It was very much scripted. If it worked perfectly, it would still be a very scripted thing. It was very much a game intended for young children. But if it was bug free and the map made sense, it would have at least been an enjoyable experience the first couple of times. Maybe someday someone will make a version of this that works. But is anyone really even asking for that? Is this something that even if perfect, anyone would want. The world doesn't need a perfect ET. The world needs developers who aren't restricted by crunch. Artists who would be allowed to push the limits of gaming. Limitations are for hardware, not for your imagination. Thank you for watching, and thanks to my patrons who make awesome videos like this possible. You can get your name up here, like them, by joining my Patreon and supporting me for as little as a dollar. So thanks to Quilla Raven, Blonde Fishy, Worm Syrup, Alexis C, Rideyante, Rask Burr, Beef Bait, Sly, Colorado Blue, Vaderson, Linky, Malding Brick, and Splackjack. I'll see you all later, because those Reese's Pieces aren't going to eat themselves.